On day one, I spawned in the nether as a baby fire skeleton. Ooh, pretty fire. There was a battle around me, but I was quickly approached by an older fire zombie who looked panicked. Hey, little guy, it's me, your brother Blaze. I'm glad you're here, but unfortunately, there's no time to talk now. What do you mean? The drowned figured out how to survive the nether and are here to kill our entire population. Soon, the fire monsters will be a thing of the past if we don't hurry. Where is mom and dad? Are they okay? <sighs> They're at war with the drowned right now. I don't know if they're alive or not, sadly, but we need to go. Just then, a horde of drowned noticed us and started attacking. Quick, run, Bronzo, and don't try to fight. My brother left to fight off the drowned. No, I can't just leave my brother when we just found each other. I decided to stay and fight despite my brother's orders and my low amount of hearts. I used my fire ability to try to defend against the drowned that were trying to attack me. Go back to the ocean depths, you monsters. Unfortunately, I wasn't strong enough to take them down and they managed to capture me. No, please, no, let me go. I was now surrounded by drowned and one that appeared to be their king stepped forward. <laughs> I finally conquered the underworld, but now all of fire skeletons will cease to exist. Why are you doing this? Are you born yesterday or something? Today, actually. Oh, well, I'll just tell you then. Uh, okay. You see, fire monsters and the drowned have been constantly engaged in a long and ancient war. Fire monsters were always a threat to us drowned. Their flames once could make us dry out quickly and become chipped, making it easier for us to burn when the sun came out. Luckily, through the generations, we've perfected our water abilities and managed to overcome this weakness and do great damage to your kind as well. Now, we are taking our rightful place as rulers of sea, land, and nether. You can't. It's not right to kill off an entire species. Oh, really? Fine. Instead, I'll just let you die on your own and send you to the overworld. No! No! On day two, I awoke in the overworld. Oh, my head. I took in my surroundings and saw the quiet stillness of the night. The moon hung high in the sky, allowing me to see everything around me. It was beautiful, but I couldn't just sit around. I need to figure out a way to go to the nether. The drowned king must be stopped. I went exploring the environment around me, looking for a portal back to the nether. Wow, everything is so lush and green here. It's nothing like back home. I followed a grass path toward a sleepy little village. Just to make Make sure. I walked into a house and, yep, they're sleeping all right. I figured that since everyone was sleeping, I might as well borrow some of their crops. I mean, it couldn't hurt. Even a skeleton has to eat. Leave this place. An iron golem attacked me. I was knocked away from the crops. Ow, ow, why I oughta? I tried to fight back, but the golem was way too strong for me. I only want food. Is that too much to ask? I care not skeletons like you are pet. Like me? Especially you! I ran away as fast as my bony little legs could carry me, finally making it to a safe spot where the golem wouldn't pursue me. What the heck was that all about? He was so mean! Just then, I heard a psst. I looked around and found another skeleton inside the mouth of a cave. Huh, who are you? I readied myself for combat. My name's Smitty. Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. But that ain't important right now. What do you mean? What's important? What's important is the fact that you're on fire and not even dying. How are you doing that? What a strange question. I told the skeleton I wasn't really sure that this was just how I was born. Well, you better get in here and fast. The sun will be up any minute and that'll kill you for sure. The sun? What's that? <sighs> Rest in peace, little guy. The sun rose and showered the world in its light, including me. But I wasn't feeling any different. Was something supposed to happen? Ah, it burns. It burns. Ah. Smitty stared at me in amazement. I almost thought his jaw would fall from his skull. You need to meet the others. Please follow me. Oh, uh, okay. Come on, before I'm burnt to a crisp. While the sun was up on day three, I followed the skeleton known as Smitty into the caves, and he led me to a massive underground cavern. Whoa, what is this place? Welcome to Bone City, boyo. This is where most of us skeletons hang out during the day. Just hang out? Ah, oh, you can get food, do fun activities, and even upgrade your armor if you got 
Prakash. I thanked Smitty for bringing me here, but I didn't know where to even begin. There were so many different kinds of skeletons. I was struck with choice paralysis. Oh, you must be hungry. Here, have some bone stew. It's a skeleton classic. How could you tell I was hungry? I mean, look at you. Your skin and bones. <coughs> Uh-huh. Sorry, just a little bone humor. Oh, humor! I crack myself up. Anyway, dig in. I ate the bone stew and grew into a full-sized fire skeleton with ten hearts. Thanks, Smitty. Well, mention it, boyo. You know, I want to show you to the king. We've never seen anyone like you before. Well, what are we waiting for? Smitty and I sought an audience with the king of Bone City. And after a few hours of waiting, we finally got one. But once we were in front of the king, he was not impressed at all. Rather, he was incredibly worried. What? Why? What's got your bones all rattled, your highness? This can only mean one thing. The Drowned King is coming for us all. You mean to tell me you've seen a fire skeleton before? Of course I have. I've lived a long life. Skeletons of all kinds and origins used to live in harmony with one another. Long ago, there were many kinds of skeletons. Obsidian, warped, fire, and of course, so many more. That was until King Pyros, the ruler of the fire skeleton, Skeleton struck a deal with the Drowned King. The terms of the agreement are, to this day, unknown. However, legends say that the deal was that the Drowned King would aid Pyros' army in conquering the land in return for an ancient war between their families to end. But it didn't work, right? No, it certainly worked. Soon, the Drowned and Fire Skeletons attacked the other existing groups, wiping out many of them. The Skeleton King had already seemed to make up his mind about me. I knew I had to say something. I'm sorry to hear that, your highness. My home too was attacked. I barely survived, ending up here in the overworld. Then you must be executed before you kill us all. I won't endanger my people by harboring a fugitive. ruh -ro. The skeleton guards approached from behind, giving me no path for escape. No, no, please, come on. We can talk about this. But it was no use. The guards took orders from only their king. Take him away. On day four, I woke up in a jail cell in inside of Bone City. What the heck? What's going on? No, let me out, guys. Come on, I'm the last fire skeleton alive. Good, your cat ruined all of us. Looks like it's time for your execution. Follow me. Without a choice, I followed the skeleton guards into a giant circular room. There were a bunch of skeletons cheering for me to die and a wooden stump where my head would lay. Fire skeleton, you are on trial for execution. You are a traitor to the skeleton society, and therefore you must pay with your life. No, I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to stop the Drowned King, just like all of you. <laughs> Likely story. That's what your father, Fire Skeleton King, told me right before he made a deal with the Drowned King. I was shocked to find out that my dad was the King Fire Skeleton, but I had to focus since my life was on the line. Please, I'll do anything. Then make this easy, won't you? Kill him! Just then, Smitty ran into the area. Run! Now's your chance! I didn't hesitate one second and began running as fast as I could. Ah, good distraction. Get him! The guards were right on my tailbone. We ran all through the city until I finally found the exit. And I thought I was toast until... Ha! Come out here and get me! Why, you little... You're lucky. We'd burn if we did. You better run and stay out! Phew! That was a close one. On days five through six, I figured I needed to make my own base since everyone was out to get me. Can't be too prepared. I went into a nearby forest and started chopping down trees to make a crafting bench and a pickaxe. I then went into a cave and mined some stone to use for stone tools. Perfect! Time to build! I found a nice clearing near a river and used the extra wood and stone I had gathered to make myself an awesome house. After making a small farm on the riverside and being careful not to touch the water myself, I realized it was becoming night again and went back inside. Later that evening, I was relaxing by my fireplace when I heard a knock at the door. I was worried I'd been found and stayed silent for a while, hoping whoever was out there would go away. The knocking persisted, however. It was getting louder and more intense. Go, go away, please. Suddenly the door swung open and it was just Smitty. Oh, Smitty, my boy. What are you doing here? Oh, I couldn't 
living bone city anymore. It's too dangerous for me now, after what I did. Oh, wow. Well, do you want to stay with me? That would be great. Then let's make you a room. I quickly made an extra room just for Smitty. Thanks, though I also want to sleep in comfort. Let's go get some wool. I agreed, and we went and found some sheep and killed them. Then came back and I made some comfy beds for me and Smitty. That's grand. No windows. Just how I like it. Thanks for letting me stay here. Um, wait, I never got your name. Bronzo. Nice. Thanks, Bronzo. I woke up to a bunch of ruckus outside on day seven through eight. What the heck is going on out there? I looked out and saw the drowned king. <laughs> Come out, Bronzo. I'm here to finish you off since it seems you refuse to die. Good luck with that. I'm putting up a fight and won't back down. Fine. But first, let's see what we should do about your friend. He then stepped aside to reveal Smitty. It's not worth it, Bronzo. Run while you can. The drowned king showed no mercy and instantly crushed Smitty into a pile of bones. No! <laughs> You're next, fire skeleton. I began fighting the king. He started using bubbles and a trident and other water abilities. I tried my best to fight back, but I could barely do any damage to him. Eventually, he got me down to half a heart and I was forced to beg for mercy. Please, spare me. Fire and water, bone and flesh. This ancient battle ends here. The drowned king went in for the final blow, and I suddenly woke up in a cold sweat. Ah! Bronzo, you doing okay there, boyo? Oh my gosh, it was all just a dream. I'm so glad you're alive, Smitty. Yeah, for now. Get some rest, and we'll keep formulating a plan to take that loser down in the morning. Okay, you're right. On the morning of days nine into day 10, I decided to ask Smitty for some advice. Well, if you want my opinion, we should really get some iron armor. After all, that's what all skeleton soldiers wear. All right, let's not waste any time then. Smitty and I got up and I left through the front door. But when I turned around, Smitty wasn't following me. He just stood in the doorway. What's wrong? Oh, it's the sun, isn't it? I'm afraid I can't join you, boyo. You'll have to go on without me. Okay, Smitty, be safe. Without a doubt. I'll see you when you get back. I went mining to collect some more iron, as well as coal. I used the crafting bench I took with me to craft some furnaces and smelted the iron down. I made a full set of tools and armor. I even made flint and steel to live up to my fiery ways. Huh, what's that? I heard some strange noises deep in the cave and decided to investigate. I peeked around the corner and saw a witch fiddling with potions and the like. Oh, darn it. I'm just missing one ingredient. Ingredients? What kind of potions is she brewing exactly? Then, without warning and without looking, the witch spoke to me. You, I, I know you're hiding. You, you can come out now. I stepped out from the shadows. What do you want? Uh, I haven't seen a fire skeleton in it. Ages. Fire skeleton? I have a quest for you. What kind of quest? A quest to kill a great beast with many legs. I need you to kill it and harvest its fangs. <laughs> and why should I help you, huh, lady? The witch narrowed her eyes, assessing me in the situation. Because if you do, I will give you something very good in return. Something that may help you defeat the drowned king. Perhaps? Drowned King? How do you know? Never mind. Where is this beast? Follow the tunnel south, and eventually you'll encounter some cobwebs. And that's how you'll know you're in the right place. Okay, bet. Thanks, lady. On days 11 through 13, I was traveling through the caves, just like the witch told me. Eventually, I started to come across a bunch of cobwebs. Ooh, free string. I collected a few and then continued on my way. Eventually, I made it into a big open room and I was attacked by a group of spiders. Come get some. I started fighting them all off with my sword and wand and picked them off one by one. Eventually, I had beaten all but one of them. Where is the spider queen? Tell me. Uh... She's behind me, isn't she? I slowly turned around to come face to face with the spider queen. She smacked me. Ouch! What was that for? What are you doing in my domain, skeleton? Uh, I'm here to slay you and collect your fangs. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Bring it on. <laughs> 
I charged in, swinging wildly with my iron sword. The queen was a worthy opponent, and she kept shooting me with webs, making me stick in one spot. I started shooting her with my wand, and was able to start wearing her down. Eventually, I was able to come out on top. I finished off the queen, and collected her fangs. Womp womp, thanks for playing, lady. On days 14 through 17, I made my way back to the witch. Ah, I see you've returned in one piece, which means you have what I need, correct? Yes, I do. I handed over the queen's fangs, and the witch began working on her spell. Money, community, communitatis! When the spell was complete, she handed over a poison tooth sword. It has a chance to poison your enemies whenever you use it. Whoa! Thanks, old hag! Don't be a stranger now! You can come back anytime you feel like doing more things for me! With that, I finally left the cave and went out to test my new weapon. Hmm, now, who do I have a bone to pick with? I went out searching for someone to fight, and eventually I came across a drowned campsite. There you are, you water fiends. I charged in and started murdering all the drowned with my fancy new weapon. Once I was done testing it out, I started setting everything on fire. Burn, baby, burn! On days 18 through 21, I returned to the base, and Smitty was very happy to see me. Oi, where you been? I met this crazy witch lady who gave me a cool weapon. Check it out. Whoa, be careful with that thing. I also destroyed an entire drowned campsite and burned it down. It was awesome. Don't you start going mad now like your father did, eh? Those stories are all made up. My dad didn't go mad. He would never. It's all a lie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean it like that. No, no, it's fine. Everyone just hates me. I stormed out and went out for a walk to clear my head. I traveled to the top of a mountain and shouted to the universe. <laughs> Suddenly, I had a flashback. Be careful out there. This is a dangerous job. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I'm one of the best in the industry. Oh, right on cue. There's a fire nearby. I gotta go. Love ya. Whoa. Who and what the heck was that? After that strange vision, I decided I had calmed down enough. I headed back home and apologized to Smitty for getting upset. It's okay, Boyle. Happens to the best of us. On days 22 through 25, I decided to go exploring. I needed more resources and also more intel. Looks like a beautiful day to explore. Suddenly, it got cloudy and started to rain. The rain hurt me, so I rushed to cover. Ow, 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 ow. I made it inside and stopped to catch my breath. Huh. <sighs> Whew. That was a close one. What's wrong, Bronzo? It started raining out and it really hurt. <laughs> Now you know how I feel in the sun. Oh, geez. You deal with that every day. Yep, unless I wear a helmet. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to help your situation. Maybe you need an umbrella. Huh. All right, I'll keep an eye out for one just in case. While it was raining, I figured I could add some new additions to the base instead. I built downwards, adding a basement and filling it up with some decorations. By the time that was done, the weather had started to clear up. I guess now's as good a time as any to go searching for an umbrella. Be back soon, Smitty. Catch you on the flippity flop. Oh, okay. That's just a new thing I'm trying out. Oh yeah, no, I like it. It's, it's good. I'm also thinking about getting a cowboy hat. Oh, yeah, for sure. On days 26 through 29, I went out exploring to find some umbrellas for me and Smitty. As I was traveling, I came across a graveyard. I looked around at some headstones, and I found a big one that I recognized. In memory of Smitty, he was number one. Smitty was buried here. Neat. I kept looking and found another headstone that read, In loving memory of Mercedes? Next to it, another read, Forever a fighter. Bronzo. Wait, that's me! But I don't remember how I died. Sad music began to play, and I had no idea where it was coming from. I turned around, and I saw a mariachi skeleton playing a sad song. Uh, do you mind, dude? Sorry, I was just trying to set the mood, you know? Yeah, I guess it was pretty good, actually. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hector. I used to be in a band before the ceiling of a music venue collapsed on all of us. Sheesh! Well, my name's Bronzo. I can't remember who I was before. I'm sorry to hear that, Bronzo. Allow me to play a song for your troubles. No, no, that's okay. Hey, Hector, do you know where I can get a big hat like yours to block out the sun and rain? You mean my sombrero? 
No, sorry. But maybe you can find something in Bone City. No way! I can never go back there! There's gotta be another way! Perhaps my people can make an umbrella for you. Uh, yeah, that would be perfect! Good, follow me. Hector sped off, and I looked back at the gravestone one last time before following. On days 30 through 33, I was following Hector. Should be just up this way. I know a guy who sells black market items. Why would umbrellas be a black market item? You don't want to know. I followed him all the way into a city and down the highway into a strange store. Seasonal, bungalow, integration, mug. Just then, a mysterious man popped up from the ground. Hey man, it's been a while. How are the kids? Oh, you know, they've been turning a strange shade of magenta and I have no idea why. Huh, kids, am I right? Yeah, but other than that, they've been great. Ahem, hey Hector, the umbrellas? Right, right, uh, hey Willis, you got any of them umbrellas for sale? Well, I've been running low, so they're gonna cost you. I need three mushroom stews, my dude. Mushroom stew, you say? Yep, gotta grow my kids' skeletons big and strong. All right, you got yourself a deal. Great. Come back when you got it. Where are we supposed to find mushroom stew around here? Eh, I know a place. Wow, you sure do know a lot of places. On days 34 through 37, I followed Hector all the way to the edge of an ocean, and he put down some boats. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No way I'm going in there. Huh? Why not? I'm a fire skeleton. Water hurts me. It's okay. Look at me. I'm out in the sun with this sombrero on. You just gotta trust yourself. Hmm. Okay, fine. We each got into a boat and sailed away. Ha <laughs> ha! This is actually really fun. Eventually, we made it all the way to a mushroom island. Okay, this is it. Go ahead and start collecting all the mushrooms you desire. I started grabbing everything in sight, filling up my inventory with as many mushrooms as I could. Eventually, I met up with Hector. All right, got everything? Yes, and more. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and out came some kind of mushroom creature. I am the Mushroom Lord. Who took my children? Oh, right. I forgot about him. I sprang into action to fight off the Mushroom Lord. He started barfing out his children, and I had to fight them off. Stop killing my children! Stop spitting them at me then! I used my fire wand and swords to fight him off, while Hector just ran around in fear. Eventually, I was able to defeat the Mushroom Lord and all his children. Sweet! Thanks for the help, Hector! Anytime! With that, we made our way back to Willis. We gave him the mushroom stew, and he handed me two umbrellas. Thank you, come again. Well, I'm off to Bone City. Maybe I'll see you there one day. If I ever return, I'll make sure to look out for you. On days 38 through 41, I left Hector behind and went out to explore some more. Eventually, I came across a decaying home that was charred with flames. Whoa, what happened here? I think I've seen this place before. I went looking through the ruins and discovered a flame pendant and a note on the ground. The pendant somehow looked familiar. I know this from somewhere. Have I been here before? I put on the pendant and took a look at the note. One, bring uniform back to the station. Two, groceries. Three, kiss beautiful wife. I wonder who wrote this. I looked around some more and discovered a chest that somehow survived the fire. It had some new iron tools and some food along with a bucket. So I stocked up and left the area. As I was leaving, I realized it was getting darker. I started wandering through the dark, lost in thought. Just then, I accidentally bumped into a zombie. Hey, watch it, punk. Whoops. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. He's not gonna cut it, pal. The zombie hit me, and he immediately burst into flames. Ah, my flesh, it burns. This is only supposed to happen in daytime. The zombie ran off in fear, and I just stood there confused, watching them die. Huh, I mean, I know I'm hot stuff, but he shouldn't have immediately caught on fire like that. Just then, I noticed a warm energy radiating from the pendant I was wearing. Whoa, was that the pendant? Does this set fire to people who hit me? I decided I would test it out more later, but for now, it was time to return to the base. For the days of 42 through 45, I made it back home and told Smitty all about the burnt down house I found. Uh. 
Interesting. You said it felt like you've been there before. Yeah, but never mind that. Check out this pendant I got. I think it could set people on fire if they touch me. Oh, I better stay away from you then, eh? <laughs> Next, I'm gonna need some more protection and some better tools. Sounds like it's time for diamonds, eh, Boyle? You know it, buddy. And you're coming with me. Uh, really? It's sunny outside. That's what I got this for. It's an umbrella to protect you from the sun. Oh, that's grand. Thanks, Bronzo. Let's roll. Together, Smitty and I went mining, and I gathered enough for a full set of diamond armor and tools. Now, if I'm gonna take out the Drowned King, I'm gonna have to confront him somewhere in the nether. I hate to say it, Boyo, but I know you're right. On days 46 to 49, I went mining for obsidian and made a nether portal close to the base. All right, I'm going to scout out the area. Look after the place while I'm gone, will ya? You got it. Make it back in one piece for me, eh? I'll do my best. With that, I entered the portal and started exploring around the nether. I was traveling around, scoping everything out, when suddenly I was attacked by some lava tortoises. Whoa, you guys look tough. They had amazing bites and they bombarded me with their numbers. I fought them off the best I could, but it wasn't working. They were getting the upper hand. I wasn't gonna survive much longer. Oh no, this can't be the end. It can't be. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I was saved by a mysterious figure. He came in and helped me fight them all off until we were victorious. Whoa, that was close. Thank you, kind stranger. I realized it was my brother. Blaze, it's really you. It's been so long. In the flesh. I haven't seen you since you ran away. You left me there. I know. I abandoned you when you were so small, and you deserve better than that. It's all right, bro. Turns out, I could handle myself pretty well on my own. What were those things? They are minions of Magmander, some kind of nether ruler working with the Drowned King. Well, I can handle myself pretty well in the overworld, at least. Can you tell me more about our past together? I can't remember anything. Well, for one thing, the two of us aren't actually biological brothers. That's just what we used to call each other. Huh. What do you mean? Our fire dad could explain it much better than I I could. He's not actually our dad, but he's our afterlife dad. He's somewhere around here, but I haven't seen him in weeks. Do you have any idea where he might be? I'd start by looking around for a big castle. That's our base down here. Can't you show me the way? I'm a little busy at the moment, so no. I'm trying to hinder the Drowned King's bases. I'll meet back up with you eventually. Okay, thanks bro. I'll be keeping an eye out for you. On days 50 through 53, I went out exploring for my dad when I accidentally stumbled upon the Drowned King's main base of operations. Whoa, this place is crazy. How'd they get Prismarine here in the nether? There were hundreds of drowned crawling around the place, and I saw the king in the center speaking to his people. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to announce that we are coming very close to full domination. Full domination? That is not good. I turned around to leave, but standing in front of me was a mysterious figure. Uh, who are you? Why? I'm the god of fire, of course. Stop messing with me! You're just some dude in an outfit! Oh yeah? Why don't I show you then? Suddenly, there was a flash, and I was transported into a vision! Bye, honey! I'm going out to the pub! Stay safe, love. I was going out with my friends, and we were having a great time! Woohoo! I love partying with my firefighter uniform! I got called into the station, because there was an emergency fire, but I was having so much fun that I ignored it. Eventually, I returned home to see my house was up in flames. The emergency fire was at my house. Oh no, please be safe, please. Before I could see what happened next, the vision ended. Huh, so I was a hero who failed to answer the call. Yes, and you were punished gravely for it. But as the god of fire, I decided to give you another chance. Now, you've got other problems on your hands. Make sure you answer the call this time. I will. Thanks, God of Fire. My travels brought me to a giant castle on days 54 through 57. I entered the kingdom and found King Pyros. He seemed to be wounded. Dad, is that you? Son, thank goodness you made it back before I passed. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you when you spawned in. It's okay. I'm here now. Blaze said you might be able to tell me more about my past. Yes, of course. You see, I was once your fire chief but we're still living and my wife Life served alongside me. We both died as heroes when trying to save civilians and were reborn as the Fire King and Queen. As for Blaze, he was your best friend at the academy who also passed away. The two of you were always like sons to me. 
So I guess that's why you became my sons in the afterlife. Unfortunately, your new mother was taken out by the drowned before you could meet her, and they wounded me greatly as well. It all makes sense now. So I died trying to save my wife? Yes, sadly. From what I understand, she had planned to give you a fire pendant as a gift to help you stop fires, but it burned her instead. I see. I wonder if she made it past the drowned in the afterlife. That, I don't know. Well then, I have something else to ask. Are the rumors true that you helped the drowned king? I knew you hear those rumors eventually. Yes, I did. But only to help the fire elementals. The drowned king broke my trust and deceived me. I know it sounds ridiculous though. I believe you. Thank you. <laughs> Ronzo. Yes? I need you to become the new Fire King and help our people. I am no longer able. I will. I promise. I'll reunite all skeletons like before and become the new Fire King. King Pyros removed his crown and gave it to me. This is yours now. I accepted the crown, and as I became the new Fire King, I transformed and gained several more hearts. This is amazing! Thank you, Dad! No, thank you, son, and good luck. With that, he passed away right before me. Dad? No! I mourned his loss and made a grave for both him and my mother. I've got to end this madness. Now that I'm king, I need to recruit an army to fight. I set off and began my search for skeletons of all species to join my ranks. On days 58 through 61, I came across some skeletons and tried to recruit them in my cause. Hmm, I don't think we can trust you. You are a fire skeleton after all. If you join, I'll get the support of the Skeleton King. Uh, you don't have it yet? Well, no, not yet, but I will very soon. We'd probably be more eager to join if we had a full stomach. Oh, I can make some mushroom stew with the mushrooms I got left over. I made them a bunch of mushroom stews and tossed them over to them. Whoa, this is delicious. Delicious. You betcha. After they had full bellies, I was able to convince them to come back to my kingdom with me. While they checked the place out, I set to work building houses for all of them. Looks great. Thanks. Suddenly, we were attacked by the drowned army. Attack! I charged in with the skeletons, and together we fought off the onslaught of drowned. The wither skeletons were a huge help with their swords. Eventually, I was able to deal the final blow to the last remaining drowned and finish them all off. On day 16, 62 through 65, I was exploring through the nether when I heard someone in peril. I went to investigate, and it was Blaze, my brother. He was being attacked by a group of piglin. I ran in to help him out, and together we were able to kill them all. I guess that makes us even now, eh, bro? Yeah, I guess so. What's wrong? I've got some bad news. Dad is dead. Oh. We paused for a moment of silence to remember the Fire King. I guess this makes you the new Fire King? Yeah. Will you be my army general? You're the best fighter I know. I don't know, bro. How can you trust me after I abandoned you as a baby? This is long behind us now, brother. You don't need to be defined by your failures. I guess you're right. It'll be an honor to fight by your side. Our first order of business is we need to recruit some more skeleton soldiers if we want to stand a chance against the Drowned King's army. On it. I'll meet you back at the kingdom. I traveled around for a while and was able to recruit some more skeletons that were native to the nether. I sent them back to my kingdom, but had some business to attend to in the overworld. On day 66 through 70, I returned to the overworld to check my base and Smitty. But when I got there, my base was in shambles. Oh no, Smitty! I ran in as fast as I could and discovered Smitty's bones scattered across the ground. Smitty, no! No, it's okay, boyo. I'm alive. I'm just in pieces. Oh, thank goodness! What the heck happened to you? The Drowned King decided to pay you a visit. I told him you weren't home, so he smashed me to pieces and destroyed the base too. That monster! Don't worry, buddy. We'll get you patched up in no time. No, leave me to decompose. I want to be part of the Earth. What? No! I won't give up on you! You've got so many more hats to wear! You did notice the hat. You didn't say anything, so I thought you didn't notice. Oh, I noticed, buddy old pal. Let's get you picked up. I collected up all of Smitty's bones and put them back together. How you feeling, my dude? Better than ever. I know what I gotta do next, but I'm not gonna like it. What's that? I gotta return to Bone City to ask the help of the Skeleton King and his people. On days 71 through 74, it was time to return to Bone City. I walked up to the execution chambers, right where the Skeleton King left me. And to my surprise, he was still there, as if he was waiting for me to come back. You must be a bonehead to return to my city, Fire Skeleton. 
I mean no harm to your people. They are my people. How can I convince you I'm fighting the good fight, Skeleton King? Uh, you can't. Hmm, would some mushroom stew do the trick? What? No, I am a king. I already have all the mushroom stew I could ever want. Oh. The only thing you could do to convince me is battle me in a classic one-on-one -on -one duel to the death. Suddenly, boss music started playing. Where is that coming from? I looked around, and it was Hector. Hector, you found me. Don't mind me. You got this. I nodded at Hector and turned to face the Skeleton King. He was already charging in to attack. He landed a hit on me, but he was engulfed in flames. <laughs> While he was stunned, I charged back in and started swinging at him. He was super tough with his hammer and knockback ability, and I thought he might overpower me. Luckily, my fire amulet had given me the upper hand, and I was able to slowly wear him down. Eventually, I was able to strike the final blow, but he had a few more words before he died. You've beaten me fair and square, Fire Skeleton. You are Skeleton King now. Try to be a better one than I was. Take your army and use them how you will. Ugh. I'll honor your memory, even though you were a jerk to me. Hey, Hector! What's up, buddy? Will you join me back in my kingdom? We could use some good tunes there. Okay. With that, I returned to the nether with Hector and my new army. On days 75 through 78, I arrived back at the kingdom with my army and told them to get settled in. While they did that, I decided it was time to look around for some more clues around the nether. As I was traveling, I randomly came across the witch collecting supplies on her broom. What are you doing here? I'm everywhere! <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, do you have an extra broom? I need one to help me fly around the nether. No way! I'm not giving you my extra broom! Those things are hard to make! Come on! Please! Ugh, fine, you're so annoying! I'll give it to you if you bring me 20 warp fungus from the warp forest! I'd rather not go there myself! Ah, oh, come on! Can't you just give me the broomstick? No! I went out searching for the warped forest, and eventually I came across one. I started collecting warped fungus, and eventually I had all 20. Huh, that was easy. Almost too easy. Just then, I heard a loud buzzing sound getting closer and closer. Uh-oh. Hey man, those are mine. I planted them myself. Sorry, I just need a few. I'll be going now. Oh, no you won't. He attacked and started hitting me really hard. He even picked me up and punched me. Ah! I started hitting him back with my poison sword and fire wand, and things were starting to get a little better for me. That is the fungus of my ancestors. Yeah, but I want that broom. Eventually, I was able to get a solid upper hand on him. I wore him down and took him out. Yes, magic broom, here I come. On day 79 through 82, I returned to the witch and gave her the warped fungus I'd collected. Very well, as promised, my extra broom. Give it a spin. I hopped on the broom and started zipping around the area. Woohoo! <laughs> this is awesome. Thanks, old hag. I flew on back to the kingdom, only to find that it was under attack by Mac Martyr's lava tortoises. I flew around, shooting at them with my wand. With my new vantage point, it was much easier to hurt them without hurting me. Eventually, I was able to take them all out, except one. I'll give you one chance to tell me where Magmartyr is. The fire elemental was nervous, and I was getting impatient. Now! The last elemental finally gave me the location. I returned the favor by making his death quick and painless. Now, to see Magmartyr. I followed the fire elemental's instructions and made it to Magmartyr's base, a tiny cave sitting on the side of a hill. I came in blazing hot. Surrender now to my scalding justice. Are you kidding? Look at me, I'm just a little guy. Once I got a better look at him, I found that what he said to be true. There was no way he could be behind this. I'm a good guy, I promise. I'm tricking the Drowned King for now. I could never take him down on my own. So what you're saying is that you need me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for you, actually. I'm here now, Magmartyr. What can I do to help? He squirmed around nervously, knowing that this would be a big ask from him. Well, about that. 
I made my way towards the nearby nether fortress on days 83 through 86. Magmartyr had asked me to retrieve his treasure that the Blazes there had stolen from him. I wonder why Blazes would come all the way to take his loot. They usually prefer staying close to home. Well, whatever. Gotta get the job done. I had to walk through a few halls before I came across one with a double chest and a blaze spawner at the end. Bingo. I tried to sneakily open the chest without being noticed, but some blaze spawned and noticed me right away. Let me guess, there's no talking this out, is there? They shot their flames at me in response, which honestly barely did anything thanks to my fire resistance. <laughs> that tickled. You guys aren't so tough against me. Take this. With a few good hits, I quickly took down the blazes and got rid of their spawner. Finally, I grabbed the loot before leaving. Ha, too easy. My brother would be so embarrassed if he knew he was named after such weaklings. I then left the nether fortress and returned to Magmartyr. I've completed your quest. Quest? Do I look like an NPC to you? I mean, kinda. Whatever, so you got my stuff then? Sure do, it's mostly just gold and silver ingots. There was a saddle and a diamond sword though. Seriously, those dummies think that's treasure? Stupid blazes. What do you mean? I thought you said that was your loot they took. Oops, I guess I lied. <laughs> what? That's it. I've had enough with you. I took out my sword and slashed him with it a few times, expecting him to die quickly. To my surprise, he was perfectly fine. But then he ran behind some rocks. Yeah, run away, you coward. Wait, what the? On days 87 through 90, I was standing there, confused when Magmartyr started <laughs> laughing, and he must have mutated from behind the rock. Looks really can be deceiving. <laughs> Suddenly, he began to grow and transform. Uh-oh, he was hiding his true size. He turned out to be very large and powerful, and he had a cannon on his back. Here we go. Magmartyr charged at me, and I dodged out of the way. I pulled out my poison sword to counterattack, but before I could, Magmartyr used his fireballs. I switched weapons quickly and tried to avoid Magmartyr's attacks. He started sending snapping jaws at me from the ground and hitting me with flames and explosive fire charges, but I was too strong for his attacks to take me down. Why are you dead yet? I'm the Fire King. You really thought you could kill me quickly? Magmartyr was powerful, but I was determined. Finally, I was able to overpower him. Bronza! Oh wait, we don't do that until the end of the video. I guess I can keep this loot I brought him. I took the loot and returned to my nether kingdom. When I got back, I announced to everyone that one of the Drowned King's henchmen had been defeated. Magmartyr is dead. <laughs> Even with Magmartyr defeated, I still felt there was so much more work to be done. I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't meant to be king. I decided to take a trip to my dad's grave and ponder my options. I'm a fraud. I was never meant to be king. I'm just a firefighter who couldn't even fight fires. Just then, King Pyros appeared to me as a ghost. Don't be foolish, Bronzo. Nobody's meant to be king. But brave people take responsibility when it's presented to them. But I'm not brave. I couldn't even save my own wife. You made a big mistake, but you ran into the fire to try to save her. The god of fire gave you a second chance for a reason. Ah, <sighs> I guess you're right. Thanks, Pyros. After leaving the graveyard, I decided it was time to visit my home in the overworld one last time. But when I stepped out of the portal, everything was flooded with water. Oh no, the drowned king must be behind this. I flew over to it and looked around. I realized that the place was sinking into the water. It was time to say goodbye. Bronzo, you came back. Smitty, what are you still doing here? Join me in the nether base. No, I can't. I belong here. Smitty got in his boat and left. I'll always remember you, Smitty. Goodbye, house. You served me well. I burned down what was left of the house and returned to the nether portal. On days 97 and 98, I flew around the nether for a while. I wasn't sure if I was ready to take on the drowned king. And to be honest, I was stalling. I stopped above a big hole of lava and suddenly a huge lava monster popped out. Ah, how about these beasts? Wait, wait, I'm a gentle giant. I don't want to hurt you. Oh, okay, sweet. What's your name? Perry, I've, I've been living, living in this here lava pool for centuries, but this drowned king keeps polluting my lava pools with prismarine tridents. The chemicals leak into the lava and 
Oh, make, make them, them unlovable. Oh, no way. I totally hate that guy. And I'm planning to kill him. I just don't know how. Oh, I've got an idea. Why don't you push him off into the lava and I'll swallow him all. Sounds good to me. Be ready in two days and make sure you're hungry. Well, I will be. On day 99, I called for a royal proclamation. Everyone gathered around the base of my castle so I could address them. Ladies and gentlemen, in this time of need, I must ask one important thing of you. I need you all to like the video, comment down below your favorite part, and subscribe to the Bronzo channel if you haven't already. Soon, I will be going to face the Drowned King head on, and your support means everything to me. Just then, Blaze approached me. I want to come with you to fight the Drowned King. I appreciate it, Blaze, but I need you here. If I die fighting the Drowned King, you will be the new Fire King. Uh, okay, I understand. I wish you the best of luck in battle, brother. Thanks, brother. With that, it was time for me to make my way to the Drowned King's base. I flew around for a bit, but when I finally found it, I landed. Well, this is it, finally. On day 100, I entered into the citadel of the Drowned King and found him waiting for me, all alone. It's over, King. Your armies lay defeated, your generals killed, and soon enough, you will join them. <laughs> you think you can beat me? I don't think I can beat you. I know I can. Then you're an even bigger fool than your father was. That's it. You're going down. I charged in to fight him, and the battle began. He slashed at me with his trident and bombarded me with his water and ice abilities. I tried to fight back with my fire staff and poison sword, but his water abilities were super powerful against me. I told you you were no match for me, fool. No, no, this can't be the end. I mustered up my last bit of strength. I hit him as hard as I could, and he was left standing on the edge. No, 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 please. This is too hot, I would burn in seconds! Oh, you won't be burning to death. I'm ready for a meal! hey -ya! I did it! I defeated the Drowned King! Hooray!